Welcome back. A border bridge linking Canada and the United States has reopened after police moved in to end a week-long blockade. But protests against vaccine mandates and COVID restrictions continue in Canada and reverberate across the world. Sarah Wong reports. A massless crowd stormed New Zealand's parliament in defiance of the country's COVID restrictions. The anti-mandate protesters gnawed traffic in the capital Wellington, borrowing a page from fellow demonstrators in Canada. Patience for strict COVID rules is wearing thin even in the Pacific nation, which once set a shining example with its textbook pandemic control. At the very point where we're seeing an increase in cases and an increase in risk to the public health and well-being of New Zealand, they want to see removed the very measures that have kept us safe, well and alive. Because it's moved beyond sharing uh, a view to um, intimidation and harassment of the people around central Wellington. Uh, that cannot be tolerated. Anger also simmered in the Netherlands, where people marched against COVID curbs and rising energy prices. A police crackdown in nearby France to deter the Dutch crowds, which brought the Hague to a standstill. Officers in Canada, where the worldwide revolt originated, cleared the remaining protesters who had occupied a key bridge to the United States. But truckers continued to besiege the parliament in Ottawa. People want to have their voices heard. We've heard them. The way they're going about it now is completely unacceptable. They're occupying our city. People are scared to go to work. They're scared to leave their homes. There's children here, and unfortunately, parents are using their children. It's a, it's a really tough situation for the police because, um, you know, violence it should not happen. The so-called Freedom Convoy members insisted they were fighting for the freedom of choice. Some of them maintained they were not against vaccination, but mandates forcing people to get jabbed. Sarah Wong, HKIBC. Diplomatic efforts spearheaded by the West have struggled to make headwinds as tensions continue to build in Ukraine. But the atmosphere is relatively calm in Kyiv. Sarah Wong reports. The prospects of a full-blown conflict with Russia didn't seem to really bother residents in Kyiv. Colorful lights decorating the streets of the Ukrainian capital gave few signs that a country is gearing up for war. This is despite the United States warning of an imminent invasion by Russia, which encircled Ukraine with troops from three sides. Moscow denies the claim, and while Ukraine shrugged off the threat, President Vladimir Zelensky thanked Washington for its support. But not all Ukrainians could simply ignore the Russian troops breathing on their necks. Even children in the eastern city of Mariupol picked up arms to train with the National Guards. As foreign nationals continue to retreat, Kiev is asking Moscow to clarify its military activities. Russian President Vladimir Putin instead pointed to the Western military buildup in Eastern Europe and demanded that Ukraine never join NATO. But potential sanctions have so far failed to deter the Russian strongmen. Mindful of Germany's wartime past, newly re-elected German President Frank Walter Steinmeier urged Putin to preserve peace in Europe. His compatriot Chancellor Olaf Scholz continues to forge a diplomatic solution as he travels to Kiev before meeting Putin in Moscow. Sarah Wong, HKIBC. Hong Kong shares closed significantly lower as fears of a Russian invasion in Ukraine grew. Tech stocks tumbled as the U.S. declared Russia could attack Ukraine any time. Meituan fell 3.6 percent, while Alibaba dropped 3 percent. Insurers Ping An and China Life both fell over 3 percent. Meanwhile, property developer Sunak closed down nearly 12 percent after Moody's Investors Services downgraded its credit. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed the day down 350 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent down $5, Meituan down $8.20, Wusi Bio down $0.70, cents, Tracker Fund down $0.34. Cents. Ping An down $2.65, China Mobile down $1.10, and AIA down $0.10. Cents.
to the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar. The euro is trading at 8.81, British pound at 10.53, and Australian dollar is at 5.53. Over in the UK market, the FTSE 100 is down 156 points. On to the weather now. There will be sunny periods tomorrow, starting with a cool morning. Temperatures will range between 15 and 20 degrees. Sunny on Wednesday and cloudy on Thursday with some rain. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Monday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Johanna Chan. Thanks for watching. Good night.